In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, dear friends, to this uh, God Mass for the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And as I always do, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Alessandra here, a wonderful filmmaker, and of course, a loving and lovely married couple, Giselle and Paul, and Cosmo is out at the moment and of course is behaving very finely. <laughs> wherever you are, dear friends, wherever you are in the world, you're heartily welcome to this Our Garden Mass. We pause for a moment in quiet and ask the Lord to look upon us with kindness. Let your love be ready to console us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let your love come to us, Lord, and we shall live. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The unfolding of your word gives us light. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy in us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in dream and said, Ask what you would like me to give you. Solomon replied, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in succession to David, my father. But I am a very young man, unskilled in leadership. Your servant finds himself in the midst of his people of yours that you have chosen, a people so many its numbers cannot be counted or reckoned. Give your servant a heart to understand how to discern between good and evil. For who could govern this people of yours that is so great? It pleased the Lord that Solomon should have asked for this. Since you have asked for this, the Lord said, I have not asked for long life for yourself or riches or the lives of your enemies, but have asked for a discerning judgment for yourself. Here and now I do what you ask. I give you a heart wise and shrewd as none before you has had, and none will have after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, Lord, how I love your law. Lord, how, how I, I love, love your, your law. law. My part, I have resolved, O Lord, is to obey your word. The law from your mouth means more to me than silver and gold. Lord, Lord how, how I, I love, love your law. law. Let your love be ready to console me by your promise to your servant. Let your love come to me, and I shall live, for your law is my delight. 
Lord, how, how I, I love your, your law. That is why I love your commands more than finest gold. That is why I rule my life by your precepts. I hate false ways. Lord, how I love your law. Your will is wonderful indeed, therefore I obey it. The unfolding of your word gives light and teaches the simple. Lord, how I love your law. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. We know that by turning everything to their good, God cooperates with all those who love him, with all those that he has called according to his purpose. They are the ones he chose specially long ago and intended to become true images of his Son so that his son might be the eldest of many brothers. He called those he intended for this, those he called just, he justified, and with those he justified he shared his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone has found. He hides it again, goes off happy, sells everything he owns and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he goes and sells everything he owns and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the spring of 1947, a Bedouin shepherd called Mohammed the Wolf was shepherding his goats on the western shore of the Dead Sea. One of the boy's goats had strayed, and to follow it he had to climb a steep cliff. Passing a cave in the rock face he threw a stone inside and he heard the sound of breakage. He became frightened and he ran back to tell his friend. Together they returned and they entered the cave. Inside the cave they found several large clay jars. Inside the jars, wrapped in linen, was one of the greatest modern archaeological discoveries, the Dead Sea Scrolls. The two young shepherds had stumbled on a marvellous treasure, but they didn't realise it. They tried to sell the scrolls in Bethlehem to a merchant, but, if you can imagine this, he refused to give them the 20 pounds they were both asking for it. It wasn't until four of the scrolls got into the hands of the Syrian patriarch in Jerusalem and three scrolls were smuggled out to the United States that the treasure trove came to light. Among the ancient documents was the rule of the Qumran community and fragments of scripture. Carbon dating on the linen wrappings of the scrolls gave them the median date of 33 AD. At around the same time, north of Qumran, Jesus of Nazareth told the story 
but by the farm worker who stumbles on a wonderful treasure hidden in a field. The man appreciates the value of the find probably a jar full of money and coins and valuables. He's an astute character. The first thing he does is to rebury the treasure. Then he sells everything he owns to buy the field. He experiences the wonderful joy of discovery. He knows the value of his find and he's willing to pay everything he owns in order to own it. Jesus told another parable about a man who discovers a great treasure. Unlike the other man who stumbles on his find, this one discovers it after a long, long search. He's a wealthy merchant who's devoted his life to hunting for treasure in the shape of fine pearls. It's worth noting that in Palestine in Jesus' day, pearls were a byword for what was supremely valuable. Elsewhere, Jesus says, do not give dogs what is holy and do not throw your pearls in front of pigs. Pearls were the ultimate valuables. The merchant, of course, in the story, has no intention of decorating the pigsty with his pearls. He's collecting the finest. He is an expert. He knows precisely what he's looking for. When he comes across the finest pearl he's ever set eyes on, he's in no doubt what he must do immediately. Sell absolutely everything he owns so he can have this pearl that is without peer. The cost has been everything, but the search has been ended. In both parables, the men appreciate the true value of what they have discovered, and they're willing to pay the cost of everything for the new treasure. To outsiders looking at them, these two men might appear totally unhinged in risking everything they have on one venture. But they're both utterly persuaded about the wisdom they have to do. In the parables, Jesus is asking the crowds if they perceive the kingdom of God in the same way. Do they see it as a treasure that is worth more than anything in their life. If the kingdom of God is not perceived as an authentic article, people will not bother renouncing anything to attain it. Jesus' own perception of life is radically different from so many people's. He was constantly challenging people to look and look and then see again in the hope that they would understand anew. To that purpose, his stories turn much of our popular wisdom on its head. And it was done in the hope that the listener might catch something of another way of looking, another way of seeing, another way of living in God's world. In effect, Jesus had what Solomon prayed for, a heart to discern the ways of people and the ways of God. We know that Jesus had to give up everything. He valued his family, his home, his security, to do his Father's will and preach the kingdom of God. For Jesus, there's no greater treasure in life than doing his Father's will when he uncovered what that was, he renounces absolutely everything to make it his own. His own neighbours and family thought him either foolish or, or absolutely mad. 
And when he gave up his own life, even his disciples could not understand this ultimate folly. Dear friends, none of us can gain anything without renouncing something. Perhaps what we have to renounce first is what our understanding is of what real treasure is. Few of us will chance on a crock of gold at the end of the rainbow. Few of us will win the lottery or stumble on an oil field at the bottom of our garden. But like the two Bedouin shepherd boys, we may have problems in appreciating our find, why it's wrapped in the ordinary stuff of life. The real treasure of life is under our noses, in the people we share life with, in the opportunities we have every day to exercise the values of Jesus. None of this might seem like a glittering prize, but it's in the heart of the ordinary that we discover the presence of Jesus. He's the authentic article. He's hidden in the commonplace, hoping that we'll stumble on that truth before long. God gives us a wisdom by which we can discern true values in the world around us. Our greatest gift is faith, which, which gives us a deeper wisdom even than that of Solomon. We pray for the Pope and all priests. We ask that the unfolding of your word gives light. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for world leaders. We ask that they have hearts to understand how to discern between good and evil. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <coughs> we pray for families during the school holidays. We ask protection for those who are travelling, resilience and patience for parents, and that the children have fun and are safe. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. Thank you, Giselle. And thank you for sending in your prayer petitions. And I'll read a few of them. Uh, dear Father Dennis and the Garden Mass team, thank you very much for the lovely Mass. Cosmo is such a good baby, and Mum and Dad are so patient. I like very much the music from the St Mungo Singers, and could you please tell me the name of the DVD you use for my favourite hymns, Be Still and Know That I Am God? Thank you very much. One question. Did the gold the three kings gave to Jesus go with Joseph into Egypt? Or did they have to leave behind everything? I have absolutely no idea, but I can imagine them leaving the packaging, but I doubt if they would leave the gold and the frank incense and the myrrh. Dear Father Dennis, Alessandro has such an artistic and poet skill. Gosh, could a mindfulness CD made of so many aspects of his work be considered? The parents, how deftly they juggle Cosmo, toys, biscuits, reading. Brother Richard's prayerful scripture is missed. You are all going strong, splendid, a voice of steadfastness. Your words keep me anchored. Ah. Returning to the Garden Mass, it is absolutely fascinating to watch Cosmo's developments. Each week there is something new to observe. What a darling little chap. Please pray for dear father Jack Clancy, how I miss him, and sister Xavier Turner, RIP. 
Thank you sincerely. God our Father, again we present these prayers of thanksgiving and petition before you. We beg you to hear them kindly in the name of the one you call beloved, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty <coughs> Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, 
that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins by his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. By ascending to you, Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, death O Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you, you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Philip our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Father Jack Clancy, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. Of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be Poet Tim Cunningham remembers how as a boy he served at the Latin Mass. This poem is called Introit. Intro ibo ad altari dei ad deum quilitificat juventutem meam. I will go unto the altar of God 
to God who gives joy to my youth. The stone steps of the church are smoother now. The stone steps slippery with limerick grain. This was our theatre and our concert hall, art gallery, and some would say museum. First steps to the thrill of pageantry, gazing at the monstrance, cope, the cloth of gold, dazzled by the multicoloured light of stained glass windows, the jigsaw saints. The Pieta was not Carrara marble, but still echoed that Michelangelo. The extracts from Epistle and Gospel knitted to our golden treasury. And Hamlet and King Lear had competition from the drama of the crib and the crucifix. Our priest actors no less theatrical in seasonal vestments, again all male. A shy soprano in the gallery could dream La Traviata at the Met. All this and the comfort of belief. Youth gifted with the joy of possibility, beckoning to feet on two stone steps slippery with rain and holy water. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go glorifying the Lord by our life. Thanks be to God. And thank you, dear friends, for joining our little team here for our Garden Mass. And a special thanks to all of you who continue to support our charitable outreach here at Redemptor's Publications. And it's goodbye from Cosmo, <laughs> and clearly, and goodbye from us. God bless you all. <laughs>